Now, no matter what you use Microsoft Word for, whether it's a one-page article or a 500-page book manuscript, at some stage you'll need to rearrange your text as you edit the document. In this video, I'll discuss some options for doing this with Word. Now, the simplest method to rearrange your text is simply to highlight the text that you want to move, then hover on that highlighted area, left click, hold down the button, and you'll see a little dark bar appear. Then drag it to wherever you want to. Now it's gonna move the text to above that dark bar. So if I wanna move that uh, heading one line lower, I have to go down to there and then I let go and there we go. It's moved down to there. So that's your simplest way of doing things. Um, and it effectively removes the text from one area and places it in another on the same document. Then the next method is to copy and paste or cut and paste. So with that one, uh, if we took this line above here, we highlight it, we right click on the highlighted area, then we've got two options. We can either cut it, which means remove it from where it is, or we could just copy it. So in this case, I'll just copy it. And then I go to wherever I want it to be. Uh, and I right click again. And then I've got some options to paste. If I hover on the option, it'll tell me what it's going to do. Uh, some of the options are different, but this one, it's pretty much the same. So we'll just take that one. And there we go. We've copied this and put it there. If I used cut, it would remove it from there and put it there as we did with the highlight and drag technique. So those are the two very useful techniques that we use all the time. Now with cut or copy and paste, uh, the words that you have highlighted are stored temporarily on the clipboard and they remain there until you store something else there, then they get overwritten. So you could take uh, whatever you've cut or whatever you've copied and you could put it in a new document. So if we open a new document like that and I right clicked again and I pressed paste, we'd get that in the new document. Now I'll keep this document here but what I'm going to do is use Windows split screen feature and uh, keep both documents where I can see them so that we can work the two together. It's a very useful feature and if you want to know how to use the window, then just have a look at the link to the video that's above the screen at the moment. Now this is a good time to introduce another feature of Word. If I click on view, one of the options I get here is a navigation pane. So if I click that now, um, this gives me a pane where I can move around my document or search for things in my document uh, with these options here. So if I go to pages, it gives me all the pages. So, so if I had copied this line here and I perhaps wanted to put it in this page, it takes me there straight away and then I can just paste it wherever I want to, like that. So that's pretty useful to use the navigation pane for. The other thing is you can search. If I wanted to search for a word in this document, like I know there's the word egg, so I'll put egg. Uh, it'll take me to where egg is mentioned in the document and uh, highlight all the areas where egg is. And then if I go here, there's a little drop down menu here, which is quite handy. There's a whole lot more options. If I wanted to replace egg with chicken or something like that, I could simply click on there and then write in the word that I want to replace egg with. So wherever there was egg, it would be replaced with chicken. Replace all. And it's done that for me. So now if I go back and I say search for chicken, there it is. All where there was eggs, there was chickens. And if I want to go back to what, I'd, what I had before, which I'd rather do, then we just click the undo button at the top here.
Now what I need to introduce to you now is the headings feature in the navigation window. And what we do here is we give headings to each section of our document. Uh, make a heading. Now there's various hierarchies of heading. Uh, so we'll first one will, if you go to home and you'll see uh, heading one, heading two is a smaller one, heading three is smaller still. And uh, it, if you put heading two under heading one, it'll indent it to the right to show that it's a lesser heading. So this one is the main heading of the document. So we'll call that a heading one. So I'll click there and you'll see what will happen. And you see in the navigation pane, I've now got that heading. So now if I want to split my document into various sections, each section having its own heading, uh, we can do that. But your heading has to be on a line by itself. You can't have heading as part of a paragraph. So what we have to do here, if we want to make a heading, is just make that heading clear of the paragraph to, and then we highlight it and in this case you can go straight to here it's under styles so you can go straight to there there's a little drop down menu and that'll give you all those headings and I think we'll make that heading 2 which is a lesser heading so we'll click on that now you can also with your headings you can number them for instance so I'll call this number 1 and then it'll keep that going throughout your document so if we're going to make this one uh, number two so we'll go there again we'll call it a heading two same hierarchy as the one above click there give it a number and you'll see it keeps it all in line and then we can go to the next one and if you look under the navigation pane we've got all those headings marked there now you might say, well, what's the good of that? Well, I'll show you in a minute. I just want to add a few more headings. Right, I've put in a few more headings now, and they're all listed here. Now, the advantage of having headings and having the navigation pane available to you, what you can do now, for instance, let's say you wanted to rearrange the order of these paragraphs. Now, it's very easy to do. Let's say I wanted to take number four and put it as number two. So I click on there select that one then i left click and hold down move up and you'll see that blue line tells me where it's going to end up i let go and there we are i've moved that one up now the only disadvantage is that you have to then correct the numbers so but that's easy to do now if you want to remove a heading what you have to do is remove the formatting for that text so you just highlight the text uh, you go to home and this little button here says clear all formatting press that and you'll watch there it's gone out of your navigation pane so that's no longer a heading and to return it again all you do is go to the undo button and hit that now the final method for rearranging text in a word document that i want to discuss today is using uh, the option of spike uh, which is a feature of word these days and uh, it's slightly different to cut and paste or copy and paste in that the selected area is stored in a different memory it's not stored in the clipboard and you can only move it to a new document you can't move it within the same document so i'll demonstrate uh, how you use spike uh, now i'll just get rid of the navigation pane just to give us a bit more room and then I'm going to use the split screen feature again. There we go. And this is the document that I had up earlier. Now the good thing about Spike is that I can select this bit of text here. And to select it, I have to press Control F3. And you'll notice that it removes the text. So you don't have the option of copy and paste. It removes the text from your original document. But I'll show you how to get it back if you want to. Uh, so we'll go down to this one and select that as well. Control F3, that's also missing. And one more, we'll take that one. Control F3. 
Now we go to our new document and we go to where we want to put those areas of text that we've cut out of the original document. This could be a research document and this could be your final document that you're now moving text from one to the other. So in this position now, I press Control, Shift, F3, and it deposits all those areas that are selected here. Now, unfortunately, you'll get these gaps because at the end of each selection, there's a paragraph break. So if you want to get rid of that, you just click on Home and you find Show and Hide icon. Click that and that shows you these paragraph breaks. So you can get rid of them if you just put that there and you delete and you can see that it just moves up like that. Unfortunately, you have to do that because every time you will see uh, the paragraph break after each selection. Now, I said if you didn't want to remove that text from the original document, then what you need to do is come back to your original document, go to the undo button, and in the undo button, you can either press it or the shortcut is Control Z. There we go. I've replaced all of those. So now that's effectively copied and pasted it to the new document. But the advantage was that I could do several selections without overwriting as you would in your clipboard. In the clipboard, when you take a new selection, it overwrites the previous selection, so you can't do that. The other thing to remember is now that I have uh, pasted it here from the spike option, and I try and do it again, Control shift F3, nothing happens because when you paste it, it erases it from Spike's memory. Now, there is a way around that. So if I went here and I selected that with Control F3, and then I came to the other document, and instead of Control Shift F3 to paste it, if I just type the word Spike and press Enter, there it is. And I can do that as many times as I like because if I type spike, it keeps it in the memory. You'll see I'll do it again. There it goes again. So that's a way of if you want to copy into several documents or several times in the same document, then you type spike so that you don't lose it out of spike's memory. Now, finally, I just wanted to say a word about using a table of contents uh, in your document. If you've got a very long document, you might want to have a page of contents. So I'll just show you how to do that. And again, this is where your headings come in useful. If you didn't have headings, you wouldn't be able to do this. So first of all, we need to create a page where we're going to put it. So I'll just click there and then we'll insert a blank page. Right, and then we go to References, and on the left here you'll see Table of Contents. Click the little drop-down arrow, and I normally just use the automatic versions. You can use a manual, but that's a lot more work, so just choose one of the automatic ones. So uh, This one has got a slightly different wording, so I'll take that one. And there we go. There's your table of contents. It's got all your headings in it and the pages uh, that they appear on. And if you wanted to search that, you'd go to your pages. And uh, uh, if you wanted to see microwave an egg in a potato, you'd go to page three. And there we go. Now, if you found this useful, please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. Just scroll right down to the bottom and you'll find the comment section there. Thank you very much for watching.